Hi folks, um, you saw me just make that egg and I hope you were inspired. But I thought maybe if I showed you just how to do a very simple close in of a more simplified shape to start with that might be a start, you know, for getting you going. So I'm just going to get you down on the wheel head here with me and we'll we'll just go through uh, making this form. I've got here um, well that's just that's just about a pound of clay. So let's get stuck into this and I'll show you how I do this. Um, maybe just bring the camera down a little bit. Yeah. Okay, let's just bring it in for a bit of detail. I know you're keen on the bird's eye view. All right. Okay. Okie dokie. Let's go. So, powder clay. Let's go for a nice closed in shape and I'll show you how to do it. So centering up the clay. It can be beneficial to just cone up the clay like that and then push it down again. You push it down but you you hold it in as well with your hand here okay so you're compressing the clay down in on itself. Now I'm, you see what I'm doing there as well with my thumb? You centre the whole lump of clay, but make sure you centre it right down to the wheel head. You don't want any off-centred bits going, going loopy down there. So make sure the whole thing is nicely centred. Right, let's go in here now and forming a bit of a V. Now pulling the clay pulling the clay across from the center to the outside, forming the base, compressing the base all in one movement. Now we're gonna cone it. Why do we cone it? You see that the angle that it's coned, say that's the angle of my hand, my fingers that are on the inside have got something to lift against, haven't they? Right, next trick, or next move, my fingers that are on the inside are resting on the base of the inside of the pot. My fingers that are on the outside are resting on the wheel head. Okay, so there's a slight difference in height yeah between the inside hand and the outside hand right with that in mind I'm now pushing in a little bit with my outside hand creating a bit of a a flange there now that little flange is what I'm going to lift up I'm just going through a few of the basics well as I'm not really the purpose of this video clip but you know we we need to hear these things don't we so again creating that flange and then lifting it up and I've got another good tip and that is when you're doing lifts where where possible always make sure that your hands are touching one another don't have separate hands doing their own little dance, you know, because you'll end up with a pot doing a dance. <laughs> so join your thumbs or just, just touch your hands in some way together when you're doing that lift. Right, down again, 
lifting up that flange. Up she comes. You see my thumbs are joined. The fact that your hands are touching means that they're unified. They're working in unison, not dancing. The dancing hands is not what we want. So, okay, one more quick lift and that'll do it. Bringing the clay up, going for the straight, the straight cylinder. When you look at the, the profile of a, of a pot, you'll see, let's just make it a little bit exaggerated so you, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, here we have some mountains here and some valleys here. Mountains, valleys, okay. So, how do we correct? When we, when we see that in our pot, how do, we, how do we correct to get it as we want it? Well, where there's a valley, you've got to put your finger on the inside, haven't you? and push out. And where there's a mountain, you've got to use your outside hand and push in. Okay, let's, let's do that now. So my inside hand there is working on that valley there. My outside hand is working on this mountain here. Okay, so we're making the necessary correction. So what I wanted to, to do was to end up with a straight cylinder and just hopping off the camera, I mean not the camera, the wheel. Right, there's the A cylinder. Okay, it's got a little bit of a, a slight wave in the top. Another thing I wanted to say was another useful tip. When you, when people do a lift all the way up to the top, sometimes when they get to the top, they're not quite sure what to do. Now what you don't want to do is run over the edge like that completely, okay? So when you're doing your lift, you come up, when you get to the top, hold it there for a second, okay? And then take your hands off, but don't go over the top edge, all right? Just hold your horses just there on the edge and then take your hands off. Okay, then what you do is take your on your left hand like that just hold it like that and place your finger on top there and do that. Okay? It's all to do with keeping the the rims of your work healthy. If you can keep the rims of your, your pots healthy, you're a long ways to making the whole pot healthy. There's a lot of strength, you see, of a pot is, is held in the rim up here. Apart from anything else, the rim is a very... It visually catches your eye. Whenever you look at a pot, your, your eye will automatically go to the rim of the pot. So you want to keep your rims healthy because, not just for practical reasons, but also for aesthetic reasons, because it looks better. Anyway, um, so I've got basically a cylinder there. So what, what I wanted to do was just demonstrate how now to make that into a closed in shape. So what we're going to do is, adopting this hand posture with a one, two, three, one, two, three, six point contact, and now, just a little bit above halfway, I'm just going to come up, up and start constricting in. Can you see what's happening? All right. Now, it's good to have this six points of contact. It doesn't allow the clay to go anywhere. Okay, so again, right at the top here now, constricting in. Let's 
said. No. I'm just going to use my throwing stick to clean off the base. And another thing, just remember, put in undercut on all your pots that you make. If you've got an angle tool like I have, make sure you put in an angle there. That's actually quite important because after you've made the pot and later when you come to turn it upside down to fettle it, if you haven't got an angle there on the corner, you've got a hard, sharp corner there, which is awkward to deal with. If you've already broken that corner by putting an angle on it, it saves you a lot of work. And we don't want to get into the habit of having to trim all of our work. That is uh, not a good... So I'm now using my stick to clean off the slurry off the side of the pot. Now when you do that, when you apply the stick to the side of the pot, don't put it flat on like that, or this can happen. Oh, It'll drag it out of your hand sometimes because of the, the contact is too great over too great an area. So it's better to incline your stick like that, okay, and then just bring the stick up. Well, now I'm using my stick right across the dome of the top of this of this closed in form. <laughs> And there we have it, more or less. That just trying to get a nice sort of looks a bit like a cannon shell, isn't it? Sometimes when you get to the centre there, it, you can then put in your needle and just make it look a bit neater. So if you can do that, and you saw, saw how I did that, it's basically a cylinder and then just constrict it and bring it in. Start by doing that, that's good practice, and you get, you get yourself going with some, some interesting shape formations will start triggering off in your mind, I'm sure. So, I encourage you to have a go at that. Here's another one that I did. Day before yesterday, another one here. Okay. Some you can make a little bit more pointed, some more round. That's up to you, whatever feels right. Okay, Simon Leach saying, have a go. Keep practicing. Bye bye.